I understand we don't become sick, we downregulate our genes and we make ourselves sick. Uh, how about children? Are their genes downregulated by their parents, by their environment, or did they choose their destiny ah, out there? What a great question, huh? You like that? So, <clears throat> there's great research in this field of what's called genomic imprinting that there's been significant studies that show that the thoughts, the emotions, and the behaviors of both parents moments to hours to days before conception cast the first genetic die. In other words, if the parents are living in an environment that are highly stressful because there's danger, or there's poverty, or there's fear, the fear then is put into the sperm and the egg as information, and it begins to influence the development of the child so that the child can face the same environmental conditions as the parents for better chances of survival. How many people are with me? So then in so many amazing advanced cultures from Africa, Northern Africa, Native Americans, uh, uh, Middle Easterners, uh, uh, Asian cultures, many times when the husband and the wife were getting, the male and the female were getting before their, before their marriage, before their ceremony, they were separated from each other and separated from everyone, not to abstain, but because both of those people wanted to bring their best before they consummated their love. They were thinking, what could I bring to, to, to create the greatest expression of myself through my offspring? Because children were the big gift to the tribe, the big gift to the culture. They wanted the wise man, they wanted the wise woman, they wanted the sage, the medicine man, the chief, whatever it was, the priestess. They wanted to put as much of themselves into their seed and into their egg. Are you with me still? So then, what is of the flesh becomes the flesh, and what is of the spirit becomes the spirit. How many people understand? So then, the moment the seed and the egg, uh, there's conception, there's a process that's done called cross-linking. And cross-linking is the exchange of genetic material, 23 chromosomes from the male, 23 chromosomes from the female, 46 chromosomes makes the human being. And now, once that process starts, there's implantation, there's the, this, the, the fertilized egg is implanted into the uterus, and now there's development. But the blood flow of the mother is in constant communication with the child. And her thoughts, her feelings, her actions, her view of the outside world further influences development of the fetus. Are you with me still? So if the child is born in a stressful survival situation and the animal nature is activated, many times the studies show that the child has a smaller head circumference, a smaller forebrain and a larger hindbrain, larger adrenal glands. Why? Because the signal emotionally that the, that the mo mother is experiencing is molding the child for better chances of survival if they face the same environment that the parents are perceiving. Are you with me still? Now you may say, well, the father has nothing to do with that. Really? <laughs> well, father has everything to do with it because if the father is the provider, if the father is the protector, if the male is the person that's making sure that she's safe, if he's out of balance and he's abusive, well, then it's going to have a dramatic effect on the child. Are you with me still? Come on. So then, then there's partition, there's birth. And is it forced, is it pushed, or is it elegant, and is it ceremonious and ritualistic? And, and what is it that allows the child to enter into the three-dimensional reality through the birth canal? And so then there's been great studies to show that when the child is eased into the environment, the child has a, a, a very different immune system and a very different way that they perceive the world. Even intelligence and emotional intelligence is different. Are you with me still? Then it's not over yet. Because now 
The child is in the environment and the child has these neurons called mirror neurons. And mirror neurons emulate behavior. So when you're feeding your child, remember how many people have kids? Remember when you're feeding your child, you want, when you're putting the food on the spoon and you like this? <laughs> you're not conscious that you're doing that, but you're doing that so that your child can mimic your behavior, can emulate your behavior. And there's great studies done with lionesses, female lions that are teaching the, her cubs how to hunt. And when the cubs are in the bushes watching their mom, and they're viewing what their mom is doing, they're activating the exact same circuits in their brain as if they were hunting. So the act of observing the parent is actually priming circuits in the brain. It's called selection and instruction. Selects the circuits and instructs the circuits. So, then, so the environment becomes a strong element for the child to begin to emulate behavior. And I always say the fastest path to enlightenment is raising children because you have to be the very thing you want them to become. You can't say, stop being such an emotional basket case. <laughs> or you know, how about the terrible twos? You say to the kid, they're little babies, they're all cute, and all of a sudden they get nine months old, 10 months old, 11 months old, now they're standing up, then they start walking, one years old. So then their neuroplastic brain is like, well, this is a <laughs> vase, there's flowers in there, there's water in there too. Oh, that's how the water comes out. You know, <laughs> Stop that! No! Then they go over and they grab, open the, open the cabinets under the sink. They take their finger, they stick it in the soap. No! And you do this for a whole year. And then they turn two years old and you say, put your shoes on. No! <laughs> They're just modeling behavior. Yes? So then the child then, there are critical periods in development where the seed and the egg have um, windows of influence. Whether it's emotional influence, it could even be nutritional. That there are certain vitamins, minerals, certain substances that are missing at certain critical periods, proteins during development, that also have a dramatic effect on the child. So now, so, in a sense then, the soul then is looking for that body. The soul is hunting for that body. And you may say, oh my goodness, well that child is going to suffer. But the, but the soul wants to know the experience because it wants to answer the question, is there more? And it wants to experience everything. So then the child then takes on a body equal to its soul's desire based on what it has to learn from an experience. Are you with me still? Now, I don't believe that's the end. I believe that's the beginning because if human beings really are evolving and as a living organism, then we will figure out ways to be able to help children who are just born into bodies where, where the gene has been signaled. And, and yes, there's a randomness involved in the equation when the parents are just doing their best and they were exposed to certain toxins or certain wastes or certain carcinogenic chemicals that have a dramatic influence on the growth of the child. But in our living organism, my, my desire, my wish is to be able to change that and be able to, to take care of that, that, that we begin to evolve our experience of it. So there's a, there's a soul that's looking for the body and there is the gene expression that just takes place from the seed to the egg to development in utero all the way to, uh, uh, to early ages. And that first seven years of a child's life is so critical because their brain waves, the first six years of their life, are in delta and theta. And if they're walking around in delta and theta, they have no analytical mind. That there's no filter, there's no editor. So you say, big boys don't cry, little girls should be seen and not heard. Money is the root of all evil. You're like me, you're not very good at math. Okay. And they take it all in without, without any analytical facilities. The brain waves, they're in a hypnotic state the first, first uh, uh, six, seven years of their life. And then they start developing that analytical mind as their brain waves change. And so that you, you, the Jesuits used to say, give me the child and I'll show you the man. Because they understood if you could take a child and work with them and develop them, that you have very, very strong principles that they'll have for the rest of their life.